Hello once again, my people, it is I, Avid. I almost said Aqua, and that was gonna bring back some dark times. <laughs> uh, so today, we are going to be dating some more Zenith. We're gonna go on our second date with Zenith, because he's a good boy, and we love him. We're gonna go on a picnic, and we're gonna have a fun, cute time. Whoa, when did Zenith text? Spooky. Hey, Andres, got three times this afternoon if you wanted to have that picnic. Can't say I've ever been excited for a picnic before, but... Aw, he does little emojis. He has a smiley face. He's cute. <laughs> Let me know if you want to come out to the park today, yeah? Uh, hang out, because we love him. Duh, of course I'd love to hang out. Cool. You want to park- you want to carpool like we planned? You get the ri- uh, you get to ride in the dragon wagon. Um, that sounds like your dick. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm pretty sure it's like a nice, it's like a, it sounds like a truck. Awesome! Let me text you my address. Cool, texting address. It wasn't more than 10 minutes before. <laughs> Hi, Kobe. This is my date. I don't know if you know him or not. Oh god, no, I forgot Kobe was here. Wait, Kobe is here in his shorts and right there on his bed. And his shorts are right there on his bed. Cool, he's in his underwear time to blur some stuff out with my stupid face. Please be wearing pants, please be wearing pants. Er, I- Kobe, right? Oh, hell no. God fucking damn it, Kobe. Oh no, just put on some goddamn fucking pants. I swear to fucking god. I did end up giving you- <laughs> Oh my god, Kobe, I swear to god. What the fuck is that? I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. I didn't end up giving you my number, did I? I'm pretty sure I would have remembered, or was that Wednesday night guy, Tolly, Tommy? He's here to pick me up, bird brain. Also, how many times do we have to ask you to put on pants before you answer the front door? I am so fucking angry with him. Oh my, if this fucking ruin- I have not played this game in like a hot minute, I don't remember what goes on. But um, if this ruins our date, I swear to fucking god. Kobe, I will be murdering you. I checked if it was a hot guy before I answered. <sighs> okay, Kobe. And that's why they keep refusing to send any pizza drivers here that aren't that 52-year-old German lady with nose piercings. Oh my god. She always scowls at me. Don't you look down at like that. You literally... Bitch. Oh, wait, does that mean that you two are... Duh, Coves. <laughs> I'm sorry, Zenith. My brother thinks that just because there's a guy calling that it's for him. Uh, no, that's fine. Nice to see you again, Kobe. Again? This guy just ends up with more and more questions. I gotta have to- I'm, I'm gonna have to keep a list. Psst. He- Oh my god, hold on. I need- I, Okay, this is whispering, so I need- Psst. He's a Honkasaurus. If you mess up, you don't mind if I- Oh my god. Uh, it was something about him being- Uh, I don't remember what fucking happened. Um, <laughs> goodbye, Kobe. Have fun, you two. He scurried off before Zenith could work himself up to an answer. He's a little odd, huh? Only when he gets a whiff of testosterone. You see, he was tragically burned with all of his replaced. He was tragically bor born with all of his replaced by rainbow glitter. <laughs> well, trust me, I'm used to it. You ready to go? Sure, ready to roll. Why are you still there? Kobe, I swear to god. Boy. Wow, I love how I missed a thing of dialogue. <sighs> I'll probably just like screen cap it and just like wait for you guys to read it. I don't know. I'll see how this edits. Zenith's dragon wagon was a large four-door monster with a large covered truck bed. It sued him down to the ground, all waxed and chrome finish. I suppose it wasn't exactly surprising that he was the kind of guy who'd have a car like this. What, with our first date outing being muscle shirts at the gym range? at the gun range. Don't ever have me read English ever. 
Oh God, I have to I have to write a paper about me writing English. Whoops, or reading. Whoops. <laughs> I at least got the impression from the drawers in the tire truck bed that he actually used it for hardware and surprise, er, and supplies. Better to be prepared than not, I guess. Speaking of prepared, I couldn't help but wonder if he'd gone overboard a little bit with the prep. From the bags in the back seat out in the sun, it looked like he'd gotten snacks and drinks for at least half a dozen of us. Zenith wasn't exactly a small guy, but I couldn't imagine him making his way through too much of this. We shared how our days have been, and his radio played oldies rock. Fuck yeah. Oh my god, I love him. I love him already? Why do I love everyone in this? There wasn't much really to say on either of our accounts. I'd mostly been waiting to spend more time with Zenith, and he had been on a and he had been on a graveyard shift the previous night at the club, which said he mostly involved getting the drunk, exhausted club goers cabs and rolling everyone out at closing time. The picnic spot was up in the hillside road, a pretty common spot for nature watchers and couples to meet up. We pulled up a little we pulled up in the lot and Zenith hot up to unlock one of the sliding organizers from under the raid uh, raised bed of the truck. He did indeed have a couple of blankets all set up, which was good. I'd been so busy trying to get out of the house before Kobe could jump Zenith's bones that I'd forgotten all about bringing any of that stuff. Why does our brother want to fuck all of our friends? Why? I just want it. There was a slight air of tension about the whole thing as he smiled and tossed me one of the bundles. There were plenty of grassy spots away from the slightly sorry looking picnic tables and we decided on a nice place that looked down the steep hill towards the bay and it was a little further from the parking lot. Zenith had said we did spend, uh, spend the time talking about him and I had to admit having far more questions than answers. But I wasn't- I wouldn't be rushing into things too much, forcing him to open up more, would I? Watching him sorting throughout the bags of the edge of a little square on a uh, blanketed land, it was a little hard to read what he was thinking. Regardless, it was a beautiful day, not too humid with the breeze rolling up from the bay. The sun was shining high in the sky without much threat of being overcast by a few street clouds. Wow. We are going way into um, the setting. Really, like, make you feel like you're in there. <laughs> I picked up the last bag, some sodas it seemed, and packed bag over the grass as his, um, and padded back over the grass from his truck to where Zenith was. Still, Zenith was Jason Aphex how many times? <laughs> Still looking through the things of his uh, back turned. A playful idea crossed my mind with Zenith on his knees and his back turned. It would be the perfect timing for some revenge for jumping me at the gun rage and breaking and break the ice a little. Mm. If I slap him in the back, um, it's not gonna work out because I'm not a strong boy. Uh, snap him out of it by making him jump. That's me. Oh, this one's gonna be good. <laughs> the perfect payback for all of those times he slapped me on the back. I slipped in clothes, moving the back a little as before I dropped in down next to him with a clatter. Got everything! I spoke louder than I needed to. He did jump a little, looking back at me with a begrudged respect as I threw up my eyebrows to let him know I did it on purpose. <laughs> what? Call it revenge for slapping me around, payback for all the rough stuff. Before I could say another word, I was on my back in a blur of motion. Whoa. He... If we're about to die right now. <laughs> he might have took the legs out with his tail or used his arms. He moved too fast for me to really tell as I landed back first on the blankets and sent us one of the bags spilling out. His shadow cast over me as he sat on my thighs keeping me pinned. This is a dominant daddy right here and I'm in love. <laughs> You know, it's not too smart to sneak up on a dragon, especially not one who knows how to take down an athletic prep, or uh, an athletic perp. Ooh, I squirmed to free myself, but he wasn't having it. He was, ooh, not today, Satan. <laughs> not today, Satan, not today. <laughs> oh my god, um, concede to fight, submit, struggle against him, submit flirtingly. That's me, that's high key me. I was face to face and sprawled out under him. I bit my lip ever so gently, tilting my head to the side and putting on my best puppy dog eyes. And if I know exactly what I'm doing, maybe this is all my plan to get you riled up. Mmm, alright. <laughs> Bitch, it worked. <laughs> oh my god, I love this game. Then I guess I fell into your trap, huh? 
You're too cute for your own good, you know. Mmm, listen, I'm a little, like, submissive little twink. That's a lie, I'm not. <laughs> I have a dad body, let's be honest. With a grunt, Zandit rolled off of me with a playful reluctance. Re with a playful reluctance. He stretched his wings out and cracked his neck. The span of his wings was impressive, even if he usually kept them tucked modestly away. He tutted and pointed to the bag with the sodas. Hey, now look, you fooling around means we're gonna get soaked when we try to open these. I straightened up the bag and he <laughs> and he had caused a spill and recovered some upside down upside down cupcakes that had left most of their icing on the plastic container. Sorry, I was just thinking about where it's just like, look at you, like now we're gonna get soaked when we open these. I would just be like, oh, are really? And then crack one open and then have it like splurt all over me. Because right now I'm wearing, you know, fuckboy tank top. It'll be wet, it'll be dripping, it'll be showing things, and I'll be like, how is this though? <laughs> Oh, fun fact, as of recording this, it is 1 in the morning during, uh, what day is it? Uh, September 3rd, as of recording this. Uh, I just came back from Nandesukan in Colorado, which is a huge anime convention, and, um, I hope that you're all excited because once I'm done with this dating simulator, I'm going to another dating simulator. <laughs> I'm gonna be totally honest, I have no idea what to expect from this. Um, it's called Absolute Obedience. <laughs> gay as shit, apparently, and uh, I have no idea what's coming from it. So there's that to look forward to. <laughs> oh my god. Not the only casualty of war here. <laughs> Guess that was my fault too, huh? Next time we do better to plan more in advance so I can get some stuff too, as uh, this spread may have cost you. Hey, you brought yourself! That's the most important part, right? Oh no, he's so sweet. Anyway, there's still some more cake things in there somewhere, I think. Oh, look at him, more, more cake things. More cakey, cakey thingies. Oh my god, I have water. <sighs> Fuck yeah. Sorry, my voice gets like really torn after a while. Uh, we started to pick. We started to pick through the savory stuff as we got cozy on the blanket side by side, sitting opposite each other and splitting snacks back and forth as we came to the stuff that we liked. Zenith pouted playfully at the cakes again and I couldn't help but laugh. You know, for probably the biggest, toughest guy I've ever known, you can be a big kid sometimes, you know? <laughs> Wouldn't be the first to say it. Guess everyone's a bit of, uh, bit of a kid at heart, right? Or maybe it's just hanging with fun people that gets me riled up. Oh, he's such a child. Oh my god, I love him. <laughs> oh my god, I love him. <laughs> Jesus fuck. He sighed and talked a stick of jerky my way for approval as he chewed on a big piece thoroughly for a moment. Hey, listen. Since I promised to chat about my stuff, I wanted to ask first. Is this kind of roughhousing stuff okay with you? In case you hadn't noticed, I don't exactly do the whole bottom bug thing. Just figured I'd ask. I gotta admit, when you start stared with those big eyes at the placefulness, it drives me a little nuts, but I don't want you playing that up just for me. Not that I'm not enjoying you being a little more built than the guys I usually end up with, you know? Oh yeah! Oh my god! I forgot that I made him more kind of like masculine! Which, by the way, I'm starting to go back to the gym, which is a shocker. Um, literally, like, I work- my left arm is still sore, like, I worked out- I'm recording this on- uh, Monday morning, I worked out almost a week ago on Tuesday, and, um, bitch, like, this arm is still kind of sore, but, like, I'm actually, like, building muscle again. I'm really shocked. So, yeah, this is actually gonna be me <laughs> in, like, hopefully a few months. Where the fuck is my... where the fuck is my mouse? Here it is. I do lean more towards a dominant role, so long as we're sharing the spotlight, I don't mind. A submissive role suits me, so that works out, and so long as you're happy, I'm happy. I'm gonna be totally honest. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <Excuse me. laughs> oh my god. You know, considering Rose and how you act generally, I didn't really think you had much of a problem taking control and playing a more dominant role. Um, hey, I'm not saying I don't like to be bossed around a little, I just ain't really one for being much of the receiving end of certain stuff, if you get me. I flushed a little and smirked, putting down the stick of jersey I was still holding when it suddenly felt a little too lewd to be gnawing on. I was glad that my more uh, receptive attitude wouldn't put Zenith off, though. I was enjoying getting more time with him like this. <laughs> well, putting it that way certainly helps me. Well, like I said... No problem, see- oh my god, that was him speaking. Wow. 
Well, like I said, no problems here. I'm not saying I might not let you know what I want from time to time, but at least I'm pretty sure you won't be disappointed by the rare request now that you say that. I like how domineering you can be, and I didn't exactly expect much less from a guy who comes to a date in a muscle shirt. Oh yeah, look at him, he's wearing a muscle shirt, like how I'm wearing a muscle shirt, except this is H&M and fashionable. I'm so gay. <laughs> Talking so candidly like this was certainly nice. I guess considering I'd already found myself pinned under him this afternoon, I wasn't. it wasn't exactly a premature question. Part of me wondered if it was rushing things a little for him to ask my sexual preferences, but I suppose we had met at a notoriously sexual club and I couldn't blame him wanting to know after a failed hookup the first night. I guess you're pretty obvious about your intentions and preferences for the get-go. If, uh, if I didn't think I could work with that, I would have said. Just wanted it out there, you know, since we've, since we're clearing the air and all. Well, I mean, I like being a little bit more subtle and a little bit more submissive, so like... It's cool. <laughs> God damn it, I hate myself. Uh, he smiled as, his caref ca as he carefully opened a soda that nevertheless threatened to fizz up like a foamy bathtub. He threw me an eyebrow that said, see? See? This is what happens when you drop the bags. And I rolled my eyes and stuck out my tongue, unearthing a few sausage pastries. We're gonna put one of those in our mouth and be new and be uh, lewd. I know, I know. Yeesh. I didn't know Dommy boyfriends would be so much like having an extra mom around. <laughs> oh my god, I want a Dommy boyfriend that's like an extra mom. Damn. He chuckled at that. Well, listen. I'm used to pretty high maintenance boyfriends. You're the first guy I've dated for a while who wasn't a bit of a spoiled princess. I don't like thinking that I'm a spoiled princess. Am I a spoiled princess? No, I don't think I am. At least I really hope I'm not. Uh, I'm doing my best to adjust to a socially refined relationship here. Refined? Okay, you've had some shitty boyfriends if you think that I'm that refined. Okay. Oh, right, that's not a question. Wow. Okay, you've had some shitty boyfriends if you think that I'm that refined. Look, I'm a, I'm pretty new to the whole serious dating thing. I mean, fuck, a picnic? I haven't been to a picnic since I was a kid, let alone hosted one. Hey, you did great! Oh, oh that reminds me. Story time. Uh, I was with my brother and my sister one day, and my uh, sister-in-law. Because my brother's married! Check, go check out his, uh, channel, boy! Um, I really hope that I'm able to, like, get a link in there somewhere, and I'm hoping that I- I did not point the right way. There we go. Little annotation for you to go check out his channel, because I love him, and I love my sister, and I love my sister-in-law, who sometimes goes on that channel. Anyways, I was with the three of them, and I remember that, like, I wanted a picnic so bad. I was, like, seven or eight or something. Whoa, I'm having hiccups. Something like that. And so, like, I was like, none of us knew how to drive. So we couldn't go out to, like, my local park and, like, have a picnic there. So I was like, you know what? I still want a picnic. I'm gonna put a blanket down on our uh, little front porch, which has, like, uh, rocks that have been, like, sanded down and is, like, filled with, like, sanded, like, cement, which is, like, kind of sandy. And I was just like, let's go with one of those. Um, it turned out to be an utter failure, but I still felt really proud of it. And my siblings were, like, really happy that I, like, I set it up and everything. But it was literally, like, we ate sushi. Or it was, like, we ate wontons or something. It was so- it's, it's honestly like one of my favorite memories with my siblings. Um, where was I- oh right! <laughs> hey, you did great! I didn't think we we're going to- gonna get through even half of this food, but it's kind of sweet that you tried so hard. You're doing fine. And dating, huh? I guess we both said it about- oh, let me check how many times you made my heart skip a little bit today. Three times? Yeah, I mean, that's what this is, right? I mean, I like you, you like me, oh, we're even sitting under a damn tree, like, in the kids' songs. <laughs> Sounds like a date to me. Oh, oh, we love this dragon boy! Oh my god, I love him. <laughs> I tried very hard to think of something excellently witty to say in response to that. I liked him, he liked me, K-I-S-S-I-N-G, ooh! We love a rhyming queen! <laughs> I realized I'd just been staring vaguely at him with a cocktail sausage halted halfway down my throat to watch the show. I choked a little, the flush from the neck to scalp. Sounds like me. <laughs> what? You okay there, Andres? 
Yeah, I just didn't expect you to say that. What, that I like you? I'll admit you're growing on me. Remember when I said you're the first person in a long time that I've been able to just talk to? I wasn't lying about that. Oh, we're special to him. Oh no, there's something. There's something deep in this. Oh no, <laughs> I'm not excited. Um, he took a swig of his drink smugly and I searched for a response. I guess out here, with just a breeze and a little feast for our company, he felt a little more comfortable being open. I suppose that that was fair enough. The gun range wasn't exactly a place for a heart-to-heart. -heart. Yeah, no, that's the place where you shoot paper in the head. <laughs> I didn't take you for the sappy type, Zenith. Sappy? I ain't fucking sappy, I'm just in touch with my feelings, alright? <laughs> Big deal. Damn. Wow. Oh my god, I love him. I ain't fucking sappy, I'm just in touch with my feelings. Why don't I say that more often? But because I'm fucking sappy. <laughs> I laughed and remembered Jason's words, how Zenith was really too, was really just a big sap under all those muscles. He put on a big show, but I couldn't tell that he let things sink deep too. We nibbled through a few prepackaged sandwiches and sat in quiet companionship for a while until I figured it was time enough to learn more about Zenith. So Zenith, uh, if this isn't going to be a shitty question, you said you've not had much chance to just talk with someone. You seem pretty popular back at the club, and if Kobe- <laughs> And if Kobe is much to go on... See, that shit's different. That's- that was mostly Rose's idea. Ooh... Rose's idea? You mean like the whole flirty thing? We don't- like I said, we don't like Rose in this household. Rose an asshole. Yeah, that was a big mess. Hell, it took you sticking up for yourself for me to actually put my foot down on all that. He hasn't replied to my text since he stormed off. Like I said, wouldn't be the first guy to act like that. I just had a shitty habit of getting into those kind of positions. Oh, he's like me. He doesn't know how to say no. <laughs> that's really... Oh no, that's not a good quality. I'm trying to fix that quality, but ooh, it's not working. Zenith's dour expression made it obvious that the topic was difficult for him. At the same time, it was time enough that I asked some of this stuff. He had invited me over here to have it all out in the open. Things with Rose and being a cop were both triggers that seemed to put him in such a shitty mood, and I'd rather look under that band-aid once than keep it accidentally poking at it. Um, cool. Let's just go down the list. Let's do... let's... let's do Ask About Being a Cop. You mentioned bad decisions. Is that what led you to be a bouncer rather than when you were a cop? It seems like it's a little hard to talk about, but you saved Jason's life. Why did you quit that? It's a... it's a long story, Andres. I haven't really talked to anyone about this in years. I trust you with it, though. And this is our second date, honey? Girl, we're putting on a really, really good impression. Zen is reached for a sandwich half, exhaled deeply, and leaned back in one arm as he took the big, filling-rich piece of the middle of a huge bite. He is going to eat us. <laughs> He conjugated for a moment, deciding, uh, seeming to decide where to exactly start and what order to tell his story. Okay, back before I worked at Amoris. Is it- I- I- I, I don't know, is it Amoris or is it Amoris? I'm gonna keep her, her uh, keep calling it Amoris. Back before I worked at Amoris, uh, a couple of years before, I just finished training to be a cop. I was real green, you know? Felt like I could take on the world. I mean, you're already green, so you liked it? You kidding me? I loved it. I felt like I was really making a difference. My, uh, my partner, you know, the guy that teamed you up with when you're working the beat, he really helped me get through a lot of the rough times. I guess that makes sense. I mean, I, I know that much from cop movies. Was he big and burly like you, or are we talking about, like, younger, skinnier Zenith here? I smiled, imagining Zenith in one of those buddy cop movies from the 80s. Who was I kidding? Zenith looked like he could bench the younger kids from a high school onward. He was definitely the bigger cop. <laughs> nah. He was smaller than me, but I respected him. I was, uh, I respected him. I can speak English. He was a lifer, committed to it, you know? I looked up to him for that. He taught me everything I know. You see, Dad walked out when I was just a whelp. Relatable! I don't even talk about my father. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, and it, you know when you say father, it's not good. Uh, didn't really have much of a father figure in my life. I guess he just sort of filled that role. He, to uh, he told me when I was doing stuff wrong, told me when I was doing good too, which was a first. I'm guessing you two got over along really well then. More than well. Rich and I, we were the best of friends. It's not like it's the Stone Age or whatever, but he was the first guy in the force I told about being into guys, among other things. 
I could see the blood leaves in its cheek as it swallowed another bit, uh, another bit of his sandwich. He looked like he'd just eaten ash. Oh no, I'm not feel. Oh, this is not gonna be a good story. I mean, I want to be reassuring. I'm gonna touch it. I'm, I'm gonna be reassuring. Hopefully, I could see the pain in Zenith's eyes. He looked away as he spoke, trying not to let me see this, uh, see this side of him. I reached out carefully and touched the back of his knuckles with my fingers. He felt cold. He didn't. I really hope that they fix this in patch 1.0.4 because I have caught so many, <laughs> so many like little like writing mistakes. Uh, he didn't return the touch, but the corners of his mouth twitched a little into a sm into a sad smile. As long as he, as long as he's like feeling like comfortable about it, I'm cool. We got uh, we got a call about a robbery. Dispatch said the guy was holding up a convenience store with a knife. We were the closest patrol, so we responded. We got advised to wait for backup, but I had a fire in me when I was younger. Oh no, oh no. Rich said we should wait, but I didn't listen to him. We could handle it on our own, at least that's what I thought as a hot-headed rookie. I barged into a store, gun in hand. Rich had no choice but to follow behind me. It was just a scrawny kid, holding out the clerk with a kitchen knife. I did all the stuff you're supposed to do, trying to shout him down. Freeze, drop your weapon, we will fire, all that shit. I figured he'd crap his pants, seeing that two cops with a gun drawn like that. He, uh, he pulled out a gun he had in his coat pocket and shot at me. Oh no. Oh, that's not okay. I'm not liking where this is going. Jeez. I thought that that was it for me, but everything happened so fast. Rich had put me out of the way. Maybe he clocked a gun in his pocket while I was watching him pull the knife down. He took the bullet from me. The sword clerk got a bat from under the counter and knocked the kid out, but... It was too late. Oh no, oh. I'm not, I'm not happy anymore. Oh my god. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I imagined what happened wasn't exactly rare, but having to go through that with his partner and mentor, I had no idea. I swallowed hard. I could see Zen is fighting back the anger. I was an idiot and I got him killed. If I wasn't such a headstrong fucking kid, Oh no, I'm gonna- oh no, he needs a hug. Oh no, I'm the huggy person, he needs a hug. <laughs> I can't even read this. Uh, I didn't say a word. I moved in closer so I could wrap my arms around his midsection and lean in close. He sighed deeply, tossed the crust of sandwich off the field and wrapped an arm around me, squeezing some of his frustration out. Oh, which means he probably crushed me. Uh, thanks Andres, I beat myself about it for so many years. <laughs> You'd think I'd get bored with beating myself over it. Just stubborn, I guess. I'm guessing that's why you quit the force. Oh my god, I'm... It's too late for this, and I'm gonna fucking... Oh my god. This is a fictional character. <laughs> yeah, that'd be why. That was a mess. That's why Jason bringing me flowers as a thank you after so long spooked me. Too many ma- Oh no. Wait, why flowers? From his funeral? Oh god. Bug. Okay. I'm, I can fight through this. <laughs> White lilies. Every week I'd go to the same place on 3rd Avenue. Little flower shop by the same bouquet of lilies to take to his grave, but after a while I just wanted to forget, you know? Well, no, I just didn't want to forget. I wanted to get unstuck and let things start moving again. Oh, fuck. So that's how you ended up at Amaris as a bouncer, right? Mm-hmm. You got it. That's also when I met Rose. He was much nicer than when we first met. Being in the state I was, wanting to forget about my past, I kind of lost myself in that guy. Yeah, he seemed... Well, he didn't seem so nice when we met. <laughs> uh, he was getting bored of me, I think. We never were a couple or anything, but he'd get me to wrangle the cute guys for him and vice versa when I was coming out my shell more. That's not how you spell shell. I swear to fucking god, Jason Apex. <laughs> God, and also, I'm sorry, like, if you only, like, did the artwork for this. I just know that you worked on it, so I'm putting the blame on you. Uh, DM me in my Twitter. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd be lying if I said that there wasn't more than a few threesomes. His charms, my, my looks. It was hard to say no to a couple of guys like us. It was hard to say no. I said yes the first time that that happened, and, uh, it didn't go well. Uh, he was like, oh, yeah, no, we found somebody else. Bye. So I knew to say no. But I realized it was 
getting to be more of an escape. I was becoming too dependent on him and to actually strike up a conversation and have fun. It did almost seem like he was holding your leash back at the club. No offense. None taken. We still had our little, oh, they're cute, what do you think, game going on. I thought it was getting better and I was getting to talk to people more than just being Rose's bonus sale, but he just reasoned out that I didn't want to be with a guy or a girl and take them out by myself after I helped introduce him. That was his stupid game. If I got someone interested, but they were interested in both of us, then he got to decide if I could play. Oh no. We, d we do not... We don't like Rose in this household. I'm no longer emotional. That only happened for like a second. Um... I don't think I cried. <laughs> Made sense at the time. Don't ask me how. I guess the reason was that if I was looking for something more substantial, but the person was looking for fun even the rest of around with me and him, that they weren't my type? Are you kidding? Like, he's hot as fuck and he's cute as fuck, and uh, we love a nice dragon in this household. It was just stupid. I wasn't getting to meet new people and he got me riled up only to remind me I wasn't looking for something casual with him and shut me down. And I'd still be doing that over and over if you hadn't told him to back it off. Um, it, uh, it means a lot to me. You being here, listening to me like this means more too. Hell of a lot, actually. I wouldn't be anywhere else right now, Zenith. Thank you for telling me all of that. It must have been hard, but I'm glad that things are a little clearer between us. I was a little worried Rose was your boyfriend, for one. You're a sweetheart after all, huh, Zenith? Yeah, well, you're pretty adorable yourself. I know, I'm a fucking cute-ass bitch, fight me. But thank you. <laughs> you you can't flatter me and not expect to get some back. Oh, There it was, that big smile finally returned like a sunrise lighting up his features. <sighs> I hate seeing him so upset, but in a way it was good that he got out of all of that out of his chest. Zenith took a deep breath inside. He chuckled, locking his eyes again. I blinked first, heat rising to my face. Oh... Oh no, we're- oh, this is a this is a kiss moment. Neither of us spoke a word. Mm hmm the kiss moment. Uh, I could feel my heart beating wildly. I took in every detail of his face. Could he see me blushing? He was blushing too. A smile play- uh, played on my lips. We're gonna fucking kiss. We're gonna kiss, boy. This is a- this is a high school musical type of bitch. <laughs> I couldn't take it anymore. Knowing Zenith wasn't with Rose, knowing he wanted something more with someone, I just ha I just had to have him. I just- I, he's mine. This bitch is mine. We're gonna take him, we're gonna put him in our shopping bag, and we're gonna leave the mall. <laughs> before, before he could react, I leaned in, shuffling on my knees over the picnic blanket until I leaned in to kiss him. He seemed a little surprised by it, but I certainly went along with it as he tilted into my lips. Hmm... Nothing else really mattered in that one moment. <laughs> I hate this game. I hate myself. I hate... <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> I could feel his arms wrap around me and pull me against his chest. His large, sun-baked, scaly frame pressed up against my own strong form. The intensity of his hold was only made more intimate by the feeling of his solid, muscular form rolling over mine. I hiked one leg up over his hip to better leverage myself as we kissed. I'm a short boy, he's a tall boy. Um, this works great for the uh, dominant submission kind of thing, which I love. Message me. His tongue opened to me. Okay. <laughs> his tongue opened to me, dancing with mine, rolling against each other to the music of our surprised, lusty groans. Our hands roamed and explored the other's body, my palm rumming down the intricate web of his back muscles under his wings. A large claw hand a large clawed hand came to rest against my rug, feeling the curve of mine before he got a handful. A shiver ran up my spine. Ooh, he's giving it a nice squeeze, boy, a nice squeeze. I broke the kiss, which surprised me somewhat as I made no consensuous plan to do so. A stray strand of saliva winked in the sun between us before breaking loose his and his chin. That's how you know that a kiss is fucking good. You pull back and it's anime, it's saliva, it's like fucking orgasm face, and there's like a strand between the other two's tongue. That's how you know that it's fucking good, bitch. Uh, where was I? That's where I was. He gave me a curious, playful, lonely look, puppy looking for a moment as he wiped his chin and I looked around. Nobody seemed to be looking this way, not that I was in, 
Not that it was a particularly packed spot. I've got a few skills of my own, Zenith. I'm not gonna let you have all the fun. Iceberg devilish- Oh, we are a queen. We are an icon. We are here to fucking- We're, we're not playing around. We're gonna have him. I smirked devilishly as Zenith tilted his head in confusion, trying to work me out. As he was about to say something, I pressed hard into him, using my weight to knock him off balance, and I lifted his hand to throw myself forward. Success! His wings spread to catch himself. I leaned over uh, I leaned over further, and with a groan, he toppled back into seeming slow motion like a tree coming down. He's a heavy boy. He's gotta be like 300 pounds, dragon-wise. Which we find hot because it's muscle. Told you I had a plan little devil. Oh, he likes us. Mm, Zenith? We should continue this another time. I don't want to draw an audience. Zenith had turned redder in the cheeks. I made to, I made to move, but he kept me there atop him with a, uh, with a hand on my thigh. I'd call this a pretty successful picnic, uh, picnic, wouldn't you? Considering that we're laying all over some of the snacks. Maybe not the best picnic, but one hell of a date. Aw, I don't want to rush through our first time play before work. All right, he works. Not like Jax anymore. Oh, that's dark. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my dear boy. But just sit there a little longer. Let me at least savor that before we have to go off. Before we have to go off. I smiled, feeling his work straight at the heart of my own thoughts of the matter. If we weren't able to do anything more today, I'd at least want to go home with the thought of him in my mind. I didn't need to nod my assent. I simply lay forward, letting a Cool. Letting her crotch as me as we shared a tender kiss and left the heat between us, kind uh, kindling for as long as we dared. Yeah, we're 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 dry humping, bitch. We dry humping. <laughs> when our lust had settled a little, I slipped to his side as Zenith laid out in the middle of our picnic, not hogging the blankets but taking enough space that his inv uh, inviting smile showed that we needed to cuddle up a little. I shifted a couple of the half empty bags and took my spot to his side. Uh, feeling a little meek as I rested my hand on Zenith's chest. He's a soft boy. He's a good boy. <laughs> I tried to think. I tried to think that the last time I laid with someone like this, being the only using, being the only using someone else's chest as a pillow. That didn't make sense, but okay. Despite Zenith being the only bearing it being the one bearing it all and sharing his story, I couldn't help but take in some comfort from laying with him too. My hand idly running over the soft fabric of his top and I listened to the deep, slow breathing of the quiet thud of his heart. That's... that's romantic. That's how you know that you like someone. If you just can stay, th stay there, laying onto each other, just like listening to the breaths of someone and like the, the heartbeat of someone. Oh bitch, that's when you know. That's when you know that you have it on lockdown. And this is only the second date. Oh, and we're leaving. No, we're not. <laughs> After the heat of the moment had passed, Zenith touched my shoulder with his hand, drawing my eyes open again. Had I dozed off a little on him? The little world that was a smelling was of smelled of our sun-baked skin in the grassy field. I shifted a little so that we were laying side by side, propped on one arm close enough that we could take a whisper if we wanted. The snacks Zenith had brought, undoubtedly cooking a little in the heat, were mostly forgotten. We picked, up, we picked at the food, particularly just because it was there. Zenith had a cold sweet tea, though it and the sodas were slowly heating under the pleasant sun. Honestly, I don't really mind that much of a warm drink. Uh, we shared the afternoon here together, trading stories back and forth along with the food. Zenith had a couple of suggestions for local jobs that might end my unemployment woes. The darker the talk as I dared broach after Zenith's cop story. Um, yeah, no, it's literally just unemployment. <laughs> but mostly we just rambled together, sharing stories of past adventures. It was good to, uh, to speak casually, even if it was just about long past high school nonsense. The stoic dragon was better company than he'd given himself credit for. With a sad sigh and a tired groan that I knew had to come eventually, mm -hmm, Zenith pulled himself sitting and stretching his arms and wings in a fantastic unconscious show of mass of musculature. I drew out my phone and pressed the screen button and decided to light the time. So late already? We'd have to be heading back soon if we didn't want Zenith to miss his shift. Oh no. Oh, why does work exist? Because we need money. We need to pay bills. Welcome to America. Uh, thanks for all this, Andres. I mean it. I appreciate you putting up with me. Hey, so long as we don't turn down every... Uh, as long as we... Wow, speak. 
Hey, so long as we don't turn every day into an MMA match, I think the feeling is mutual. We shared a laugh and I got to my feet, having to shift the hem of my pants back into place and fiddle with a button with an embarrassed grin. A lot of the heat of our less than respain makeout session had pettered out, but if he dared to look too hungry at me as I fumbled my clothes back in line, I was apt to have the same problem all over again. I mean, you're not wrong. It's literally, hey, no promises there. Zenith opened his arms for a hug and I took it eagerly, feeling him lingering on one last squeeze before he packed things up to, to take to his car. I thought I was the tease here. Oh, wow. We should probably get heading home, yeah? Hope you don't mind me dropping you off at the driveway. It's getting late. Oh, no, that's fine. Oh, we love a good boy. Thanks for the ride again, Zenith. It's been cool getting to see more of what you're like when you're not bouncing. And, you know, beating people's faces. Because that's what you do. So I, uh, I was thinking... Do you want to do this kind of thing again? I'll be blunt, I'm really enjoying this. I just hope that you're feeling the same way. Oh, I like that. I like that so much. Oh, I'm a plushy boy. Uh, thank God I have this on high exposure to make myself have that glowy look. Because uh, if not, I have no idea if, my blood, if a blush would be showing or not. I feel exactly the same way, Zenith. I'd love to see you again. And again. And again. Oh, I am lovestruck. Well, god damn, remember what I told you about being cute? You're killing me. Come on, we better make tracks if I'm gonna get you back in time. I'm inviting him to my house. There wasn't much more to say on the way back as we sat in silence and the radio played. Zenith was grinning, not his nothing wrong smile, but either, but an earnest one. It must have taken him some guts to admit that he liked me. I was grinning too, it was hard to even force myself to stop. I had to admit, the smile wasn't exactly just an emotional relief. My heart was just too busy raping to- uh. <laughs> Did I just say raping? Wow. Racing. To keep my thoughts that pure. Cool. The thought of him rushing home and handling his stress before work made me shift in my seat. Maybe we could- No. Perhaps he'd use his phone to- No. I shouldn't push my luck. We are about to send him a nude. We were about to send him a video. I was getting redder in the face. We pulled outside of my house before I had a chance to formulate some sort of plan of action and Zenith chuckled as he turned at me. Thanks for everything today, Andres. I meant everything that I said. I've had a blast today and that was all you. Oh. He has work, but I'm gonna invite him in. <laughs> He has work, but I'm gonna invite him in. Oh, no. This is not gonna go well, but... He laughed earnestly, and the awkward tensions between us melted away. Flicking the idle engine off, he faced me with a fierce longing as his face as he turned me to him, and we started to kiss again. Lips rolling against each... Wow, this is, this is a half-hour episode. This is emotional. This is an emotional train ride. <laughs> Uh, lips rolling against each other, his hand held me, twisted in my seat by the hip, particularly pulling me over the center console of our tongues dance and our passion escaped in needly primal grunts. My hand stroke up to firm mass of his chest, feeling his pulse strong in his neck as I pull myself close, hands tracing his sturdy jaw and back to hang onto his neck as I stuck his tongue and lapped over his teeth. He practically pulled me to his lap, my knees up on my seat, and the passionate kiss refused to burn out for a long five minutes. Oh my god. Oh my god, we're gonna get some on the second- are we gonna get some on the second date? I staggered from Zenith's truck some time later, my clothes feeling too tight and hot in my body. We'd barely done more than kiss away in the last few minutes before he had to rush home to not miss his shift, but my body felt alien and overdressed all at the same time. Damn it. Okay, cool. We didn't get any, but I definitely needed a shower. A cold one. Okay. Oh, I thought that we were done. Never mind. The shower didn't exactly help. Sorry to keep you. Hope you got work okay. I had a great time, Zenith. I'll call again soon. Got here okay, yeah. <laughs> and hell yes. Call me soon, Andres. Oh my god. <laughs> now who's the cute one? Oh my god. Okay, someone likes me. Someone likes me. Oh, okay. We almost fucked in his car. 
cool. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. My name is Veed. I hope that you had a wonderful time watching this. Um, I had a, an emotional time watching this, playing this. And, uh, you know what? I will see you in the next video. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>